So we're continuing to read Little Britches by Ralph Moody here at the Caribou Public Library. This is our chapter book story time and I'm Miss Erin. So thanks for joining us today. We are going to be on chapter 18 today. It is called Father and I Become Partners. When we lived in East Rochester, mother used to let Grace and me take the money to pay the grocery bill every Saturday. Mr. Blaisdell always gave us a little bag of candy when we came in to pay. But since we had moved out to the ranch, we never got any. I liked all kinds of chocolate, but I liked the bitter kind mother baked cakes with best. The last Christmas before we came west, she had made fudge with some of it. It was the best candy I ever tasted. I got thinking about fudge, and one night I asked her when she was going to make some more. She said maybe she'd make some when Christmas came, but sugar cost too much to be using it up in candy that we didn't need. The more I thought about fudge, the more I thought about the bar of Baker's char chocolate that we got with our last groceries. And the more I wanted some of it. Baked beans, pea soup, and fried side meat had tasted all right before, but thinking about chocolate, they didn't even make me feel hungry. The next afternoon when I was helping father on the winnower, I was thinking of what he had said about going to meet your troubles and how much less they would be. I don't know if I'd ever stopped thinking about that when I began daydreaming about chocolate again. It was right then that I got the idea. If I should whack a chunk off the end of that bar of chocolate, mother would be sure to miss it. Then, before she had any idea who had done it, I could confess and probably wouldn't even get a spanking for it any more than I did for going up to two dogs. Hmm, what do we think about that? I waited until she was out feeding the chickens. Then I told father that I was thirsty and I thought I'd go in for a drink of water. All the time I was going into the house and getting the bar of chocolate down out of the cupboard, my head wanted to think about tearing boards off my house, but I wouldn't let it because I told myself that was only when you did things you shouldn't and then lied about it. I wasn't going to lie at all about the chocolate. I heard mother coming just when I had the knife ready to whack off the end of the bar, so I had to slip it into the front of my blouse and pick up the water dipper quick. Before I went back to help father, I went to the barn and hid the chocolate bar back of, excuse me, I hid the bar of chocolate back of the curry comb box. All the rest of the afternoon, I didn't like to look at father. I tried to get him to let me go over to see Willie Aldevote, but he wouldn't. Every time he spoke, it made me jump and my hands got so shaking or shaking so that I couldn't hold the pieces still enough for him to solder. He asked me what was the matter. I told him it was nothing, except that my hands were getting cold. I knew he didn't believe me, and every time he looked my way, my heart started pounding, because you could always tell what was going on inside my head. It seemed that it would never come time to go for the cows. I didn't want the chocolate anymore. I just wanted a chance to put it back without being caught. On the way out, of the out for the cows, my heart stopped pounding so hard that I could think better. I hadn't really stolen the whole bar of chocolate, because I'd only meant to take a little piece. And that's as much as I would have taken if mother hadn't come in just when she did. If I put back the whole bar, I wouldn't have done anything wrong at all. I nearly decided I would do it, but I just kept thinking so much about chocolate, it made my tongue almost taste the smooth bitterness of it. It didn't seem as if it would be very wrong if I only took a small piece. Then I got thinking that if I took a sharp knife and cut off about half an inch off the end with a good clean slice, mother might not even notice it. I was nearly out to where the cows were picketed when I remembered what father had said when I got my trap. Some of the money in his pouch was mine because I had earned it. Why wouldn't it be all right to figure that the bar of chocolate had been bought with my own money? And in that way, I wouldn't be stealing it at all. That seemed to fix everything. And I got planning how I would go out to the barn every night after school and whittle off a little piece of chocolate. <clears throat> I could have felt all right about the whole business if it hadn't been for Mother's reading. Sometimes on Sunday afternoons, she used to read just like Father, but any of us could stay in the house and listen if we wanted to. He often had her read Shakespeare plays. Oh, just to Father. She would read to Father. <laughs> he often had her read Shakespeare's plays, and the one he liked best was about Hamlet. I liked it too, and used to listen every time she read it. I had just pulled the picket pins and was heading the cows home when the bad king's prayer came into my head and I couldn't get it out. I tried to think about how High dived off his horse and came up on his feet 
and about two dog and king and everyone else. But my head kept on saying, oh, my offense is rank until I thought I'd go crazy. We were nearly to the railroad track when I decided to leave the whole matter to the Lord and twisted out a dried soapweed stock with seed pods on it. When you slung one of them up into the air, it would wobble and twist all around so that you never knew which way it would come down. I told myself that if it came down with the pods to the west, I'd take the whole bar of chocolate back. If it came down pointed to the south, I'd take half an inch off the end. But if it came down pointed to the east, it had been bought with my own money and it wouldn't be stealing to keep it. I swung the pod stock around my head a few times and flung it as high as I could. Then I shut my eyes tight until I heard it land. When I opened them, the pod end of the stock was pointed almost towards the west, but not quite. It was a little bit towards the south. There was a little, oh, there was a bright moon when I went to bed that night and it was sharp and frosty. I couldn't go to sleep and I kept trying to remember how much of the pod end of that stock had really been pointing toward the south. At last I heard father put King outside for the night and a little later, when I peeked under my curtain, I could see that he had blown out the lamp. I pulled my overalls up over my nightgown and took my shoes in my hand. After I was out in the yard, I slipped them on and took the ax from the chopping block. It was good and sharp, and I was sure I could peel off a smooth, thin slice of chocolate with it. It was dark as tar inside the barn, and I felt along the wall for the curry comb box and lifted the chocolate box out from behind it. King had followed me, and I nearly fell over him when I was groping for the door, but it was so light outside that you could almost have read a book. I shook the bar out of the box, unwrapped it, and laid it on the lower rail of the corral fence. Just as I was starting to cut it with the ax, father said, son, I couldn't think of a thing to say, but I grabbed up the bar of chocolate and shoved it inside the bib of my overalls before I turned around. He picked me up by the shoulder straps, just as he'd have picked up a kitten that had wet on the floor, and took me over to the wood pile. I didn't know anybody could spank as hard as he spanked me with that little piece of board. I, it felt as if my bottom were going to catch fire at every lick. Then he stood me down and asked me if I thought I deserved it. He said it wasn't so much that I took the chocolate as the way I took it, and because I tried to hide it when he spoke to me but it was the next thing that he said that hurt me worse than the spanking. Son, he said, I realize a lot better than you think I do that you have been helping to earn the living for the family. We might say the chocolate was yours in the first place. If you had asked mother or me for it, you could have had it without a question, but I won't have you being sneaky about things. Now, if you'd rather keep your own money separate from the families so you can buy the things you want, I think it might be a good idea. I never knew until then how much I wanted my money to go in with fathers. Ever since we bought the cows, I had been able to feel that I had a part in all the new things we were buying to make ourselves real ranchers. And it looked as though it were all slipping away from me. I had felt I was beginning to be a man because I guess I was still just a baby. <laughs> because I had hid my face against father's stomach and begged him to let me put my money in with his. Father hadn't been coughing nearly so much that fall as he used to, but he coughed, and it seemed as if he choked a little before he answered me. He said he didn't want a sneaky partner, but if I could be open and above board, he didn't know a man that he'd rather be in business with. I couldn't help crying some more when he told me that, not because my bottom was still burning, but just because I loved him. I told him I'd never be sneaky again, and I'd always ask him before I did things. We walked to the house together, at the bunkhouse door, he shook hands with me and said, good night, partner. When I went to sleep, my hand was still hurting. Good from where he squeezed it when we shook hands. And that's the end of chapter 18. We'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.